It's a ridiculous take. I mean, you, you're it's out here absurd. acting like the playoff game didn't happen. Well, you're, that's what you're doing. You're oh, look at this point. guy. Live. <laughs> Is that a Trask jersey? No, He's it's not a number show. six. Oh, yeah, they don't even I make wish, Kyle Trask I jerseys. Wish. I wish go to the University of Florida Trask. Pro Shop. It's first things first. <laughs> Today. I thought that was pretty transparent. Yeah, I would have blamed you to be honest with you. Okay. If it was happening to me, I wouldn't have been like oh, looking at myself. I'd be like, "What of this guy?" Uh, how shocking was this collapse? Simultaneously, totally shocking and not shocking yeah. at all. But let's not bury I'm the lead here. You were shocked. The, well, I'll explain that in a moment. But first, I want to give Brew credit, <laughs> and uh, because listen, the I understand this is a tough day for Brew. Well, yeah. And Double whammy. Yesterday could have been a really tough day for me, mm-hmm. but Brew kind of let me off the hook a bit. He didn't really twist Very the much. knife that Dallas was my you know pick to make the Super Bowl. Yeah. Now I understand what you're thinking, America. Well, that's not quite the same as Brew picking the Eagles to win the Super Bowl, tripling down a few weeks ago, and having them lose to a player I he said was going to be of benched him a week ago, for Kyle though. Trask. He's I understand all that, that, but, you but were I don't. Still two toes. I, no, yeah. I was, you had a couple days. No, and then all done. the toes were eventually the gone. Lost. But even after all the toes were gone, if you remember, he defiantly said there would be no upsets this weekend, which means even he thought they were going to beat the Bucks, and then of course the Bucks trounced him. But I don't want to be too hard on Brew because he wasn't too hard on me. So let me. And I, he's being a good sport wearing the Baker Mayfield jersey, which honestly. Looks great on you. Doesn't better matter. than the cowboy, well, cowboy outfit, not jersey that you so often and wear this around is the better office. Than cowboy. Um, I'll give you all right. That. I'll so give here's you why it is shocking, because it's unprecedented. There is only one team that I could find in modern NFL history, barring the quarterback going down, mm-hmm. that had this type of start and this type of finish, and it's the 2008 Giants, coming off a Super Bowl victory, you started 11 and one and then fell apart down the stretch and lost the first playoff game. But their star receiver shot himself and missed the rest of the year. And I love Plex and respect him, but that's what happened Mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh, okay, there was an incident that derailed the team. That didn't happen here. So in that regard, historically, it is unprecedented, this type of collapse. The reason it's not shocking is because it was in slow motion for two months. It's yeah. because you saw, you can throw out, I think fairly, getting blown out by the Niners, as they were 10-1, and one, like, you know right. what I mean? That, that, that You can even kind of throw out getting blown out by the Cowboys, the divisional rival, Dallas. they had split it, they didn't have to have it. Those games take on added importance now that we know what happened. But once Drew Lott drives the field, And then the next week, you struggle with Tommy Cutlets. Mm -hmm. And then the next week, Kyler drives the field. And then the next week, you no-show for the first half when your stars are playing against the Giants. We all knew this was happening. And then, Brew, then to circle back around to the shocking part, what was shocking to me is they played a playoff game apathetically. And that I've never seen. I've seen teams with four win teams in the last game of the year mail it in. I, I don't know about you. I've never seen a team in the first quarter of a playoff game seeming to not want to be there, and that's what I saw from Philadelphia yesterday. Yeah, I'm incredibly shocked, obviously. Um, but they went from being one of the best teams in the league when they were 10-1 and one, to maybe the worst team in the league. <laughs> I mean, really, Carolina gave Tampa Bay more trouble two weeks yeah. ago or last week than Philadelphia did but- yesterday. I mean, they might be the worst team in the you league. You can show the numbers. They lost we to the freaking them, Giants over the last seven and weeks. the Cardinals. Yep. All right. And even when they were 10 and 1, they were still, they weren't blowing people out, but they beat good teams. Okay? Yep. Six of those teams were playoff teams. So it's what I saw though last night, Nick, I agree with you. Never seen anything like it. All right. They were, it was beyond apathetic. They were dispirited. They were uh, uh, lifeless. They were – it was ridiculous what I saw. They looked like – and I'm not even trying to overstate it. They looked like they forgot to play NFL – forgot how to play NFL caliber football. The missed tackles – they had 13 missed tackles. I bet you – and maybe this is an overstatement. I feel like I could count on one hand the times that – a Tampa Bay runner or ball carrier got tackled on first contact. Uh, that's what it like, felt it like. Like, it was yep. ridiculous. Aikman and Buck seemed uh, angry at it, I, understandably. No, it, even some of the big plays, like the first touchdown, mm-hmm. uh, 
Yeah. That guy, four guys should have tackled him. Yes. Like, it was – I have not seen anything like it. And they, they we got this yards after yeah. catch. Uh-huh. 219 yards after the catch. Wow. Think, I mean, 219 like yards like for receivers is good, period. Let alone ah. after the catch. All of those are the most in the wild card round. It was it, – what I saw I, – I, I agree with you. I've never seen anything like it, Nick. It looked like they didn't want to play. It looked like they had no confidence. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I've seen in sports that I feel like I can compare it to was when LeBron against Dallas in the 2011 finals, when they're up 2-1 and something just happens to him and he's just not himself and he just it, he looked like a different person out there. But this was over two months and a whole team. And it was a team, right? The yeah. whole team. The only guys I, I would say showed up were Devontae Smith and DeAndre Swift didn't get a lot of opportunities, mm-hmm. but he looked like he was well, playing. Fletcher Cox, I thought, was fighting. Jason Kelsey, it's hard to grade it. Yeah, I'm not the line that I'm – You yeah. give him credit, but yeah. But go ahead, Wild Star. Uh, Eagles ranks last year's defense, which was historically good, and that's why we thought they were going to, you know, give the Chiefs a run for their money. In the Super Bowl, they went from – First in opposing yards per play to 24th. First in passing yards per uh, game to 31st. Sacks, they went from 1st to 19th. It's just a a total debacle here. So we're going to play the specific blame game with Sirianni in a second. But do you think this is just a brain drain of the coordinators no. leaving? Do you think this is leadership within the no, team? No, I think it's I think it, right now. Or just guys down. not tackling. Uh, listen, I'm not I, the, put on they, let's be very yeah, clear here. Uh, I mean, we can talk about the defense in, and the coaching in a moment. Black, the, off, the offense was terrible, too. They, 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 we can show their yeah. third down numbers. 0 for 10. They were unprecedentedly bad yeah. on third down in this game. That Again, and the last play selection 30 postseasons. This, they are one of three teams, one of four teams, pardon me, to have this happen to them in the playoffs. Unprecedented is not an overstatement there. They are right now a team that looked like they had no leadership off the field or on the field. Right. It looked like if we're recalibrating MVP votes that maybe A.J. Brown sneakily should have gotten some more because the offense was totally out of sync without him. And then the defense, which was the canary in the coal mine for how bad this team could be. Honestly, there were signs of it last year when the numbers were good, but we talked about the quarterbacks. Brew, and I know this is going to be a hard thing, but when you looked at that Eagles team and they didn't want to make contact and they didn't want to hit anybody and they were very finesse, did it remind you of any team or anything? What did it remind you of? The Dolphins? This was worse than... I, this didn't remind me of anything. But I think even the Dallas, the Dallas loss was more shocking. But this was. But what were, Dallas what at least were you calling the like Dolphins played. all year? What break were, dancers? Break dancers. These exactly were worse. right. These were. It, it reminds oh. you of <laughs> the break dancers. I had no we idea. We can't say I that. Had no idea. Just for Miami, bro. <laughs> If you're gonna no, do these this, these dudes have life. If these gonna, dudes are getting down, they're moving. <laughs> they're with it. You know what I'm saying? He still loves it. I love it. Bruce still I will not. It. I will not we call the Eagles mad. break down. I won't give the Eagles that respect. <laughs> these boys are getting down. He still loves yeah, it. Yeah, no. He, I can't. I can't even put the Eagles in that. Okay. In that. All right. But um, I, but I'm glad you brought them I, in. Bruce yeah, loves bro. them. That's how I used to get down back in the day. Y'all lucky, your brother. It's like 1986. <laughs> okay. Jermaine. <laughs> Wilds. What do you mean? What's your problem? I appreciate they, the effort, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Drew was saying teams that don't want to hit are break dancers all year. Yeah, no, I He was talking about the Dolphins and certain other teams. Well, that is really well done, fellas. And now it's his beloved Super Bowl pick, the Philadelphia Eagles. Thanks, guys. Good job. Thank you. Uh, we As always, it. we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> like the Golden State Warriors. <laughs> now, this new trend. The Golden State. They could qualify. They could qualify. All right. uh, Moving on. It was all good just eight weeks ago. Should the Eagles move on from Sirianni? Brew. It's easy to pile on him. And I'm not saying he shouldn't get fired, but I'm going to give a nuanced answer because I don't know, and I haven't seen in the reporting, 
anything to definitively say like he's lost the players. You know, a lot of the players are speaking. Now, I get it that it's on the record, so they might just be saying it. But they're saying they still believe in him and all that. And my, my point is this. What I saw last night and really over the last two months looked like something in that a problem in the organization or in the locker room. I don't know if something personal happened between and I'm not saying it did. I have no idea. But it, this is beyond football. You just don't see it. Like I said, Dallas got beat and I know they they choked. They didn't show up. Yep. But they, they didn't look like they were sleepwalking. No. These guys looked like they couldn't wait for the season to be over. And you have great leadership in Hurts and in Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, and some others. So it may be something going on that the players know about and even the coaching staff knows about that, that has really – messed up the locker room, maybe. But, I mean, if and J- not, to, to that point, just real quick, Jalen had that weird quote of you, you don't know right. and even you don't yep. know what you don't know, but I, go ahead. Who knows? So my point is if I'm running this, the Eagles, then I'm finding out what in the world happened. And if indeed it is just Sirianni has lost the players, lost the leaders in the locker yep. room like Hurts and those guys, then he's going to have to go because yep. this is a team built to try to win now. But if if it's something else, then maybe they can just get some of the players out of there and all of a sudden they're back to like last year. So I, I'm, I, I'm not sure yet on Sirianni. If I can quote Kevin Clark, who's a great NFL writer and podcaster, the Eagles have fired far better coaches than Nick Sirianni. Know that. And right now I don't, true, I don't know what he does well. He doesn't call plays. Does he design a great staff? Doesn't seem like that to me. He had the, the, the defense was bad under Sean Desai. He then made it the worst in the league instantly by anointing Matt Patricia, the guy, while not officially firing Desai, just publicly humiliating him for the last two months of the year. Would so you there's give that. him credit, though, for the first two years? And, and I mean, no. he, he, that's his staff. No, what do you mean, of course? That's what, that I was mean, his staff. He it had was his staff. staff. He had two coordinators lead. He went to the, the Super Bowl. Okay, so hold on. Wait, so here's so here's what I'm curious about. They were four win teams. So this is where I sometimes struggle at times with how we we assign credit. I felt like, and I felt like we heard from other players out around the league about the Eagles' decided talent edge last season, Mm -hmm. and that they were not a hard team to coach. I figured who it was. Dusty can maybe remind me my ear. Good morning. The the guy who went on Good Morning Football and said that. At no point did I see the Eagles where I was like, wow, that is innovative and groundbreaking, and he's not calling the plays. I mean, I don't want to be and a so, jerk, but, like, the tush push might be right. ugly, but he's the only – they're the only team that did it, right. and it and can be groundbreaking. It well. It's like yeah. the post-it note. Like, why didn't I think of that? Like, okay. well, you didn't. And, and, so, and they it, won four games it, before him, nine games his first year. So, that was – it was a nine and eight team going into last year. No, I – I understand all of that. I don't think he's a good coach. I don't. I and, and I will. And again, the the. I don't think the tush push was a brilliant. Maybe it was brilliant to consider it, but I think that the credit there lies in Jason Kelsey more than anyone else and the strength of the quarterback. I don't think it was a you know brilliant design. Maybe it did was a strike of brilliance to try it, but I also don't know that was his brainchild. And so I just that if if he were fired. Would you want – let me ask you this. The Patriots have an opening. Would you want him? In what? To be the head coach of your team. No, we have – Mayo's the head coach. Okay, I'm sorry. The uh, offensive coordinator of the team. Pardon me. uh, As a coordinator – no, no, it's that's Mayo's decision. Okay, yeah. So, right, if he got fired, would the Titans want him? Would the Chargers want him? Why should the Eagles well, want no, him? Not many people are going to want him coming off of this. And, again, we don't know if this is on him. I mean, ultimately, he's the head coach, so, yeah, it's on him. But we don't know if something else is going on. Yeah. The guy has been successful. And I'm not saying he's Andy Reid. I'm just saying he has been successful so, in short order. So, Brian Dayball went 6-11. and 11. Everyone else going to get fired? Right. And Brian Dayballs are like, 6-11. Yeah, pretty good. Robert I did that. I had this thing. Is That's safe. it. Robert Sala is safe. But because you went to the Super Bowl last year, because the Cowboys had all this Super Bowl no. hype, those guys get the axe, and Brian Dayball no. sitting there at that 6 is- and 11. 
the only that, the only surviving well, coach that, in again, the NFC. If East. we want to talk about whether or not Brian Dable's underrated over, no, it's just odd that we're firing. That's fine. Like they're we're firing yes, the to, whole division. Yes, to whom much is given, much is expected. Everyone thinks the Eagles have a lot of talent. They were the worst team in the NFL for two months. The coach doesn't call plays, made a massive staff change that blew up in his face, and was when he got the job, it's not like people are like, oh my god. That guy, he has been on the coaching fast track. So for all those reasons, how was he successful? What do you? How was he successful yeah. last year? I think the, that the two years he's been there. Okay, so I don't. I, I to, in my know, opinion, I, I it, well, the first year what he did was when they were two and five, he gave up play calling to Shane Steichen. Yeah. Is it possible the smartest brain in the room was Shane Steichen? But, yeah, that's sorry, possible. Here's, but here's the only yeah. thing I don't like, and then we're going to move on <laughs> yeah. to Baker. If he's just kind of like a rah rah guy. Mm-hmm. I get it. Who who took a, a a great roster to the Super Bowl? Fine. Now the roster's not great, right. so he doesn't get any credit when they win, and he gets all the blame when they lose because no one's pointing the finger at the Eagles front office I, that we just have to like. I, no, I'll do that to. too. So g- brilliant. I, I, I think Roseby's made some mistakes, but if I make because I didn't want to yell at you, I actually wanted to give you credit <laughs> for something. Wild brew. You and I owe Wilds an apology. Oh, for, this is going to be a fake one? No, it's a real, a legitimate, it real apology. Brew, we mocked him all year for his NFC pick being the Vikings. As we should. I <laughs> believe Wilds had the best NFC pick of the two of us. Our teams were healthy Our teams and were got equally mortified. Bad. His team no, will never it know. It wasn't a good team. So, so Wilds, you know how that was a ridiculous. Bring Wilds. I will flowers. not outside, go there. Outside, we're giving Wilds his flowers. Those are funeral flowers. We're giving Wilds <laughs> his flowers. Those are flowers. Not flowers. <laughs> we're giving you I your will flowers. Not, well, that's Everyone not flowers. Flowers. What do you mean? These are flowers. Everyone Dusty, always Dusty's talks about giving people their flowers. Dusty, those are funeral flowers. Do not ever give those to your wife. Well, those are like sad. Flat I well, all coffin. three of our well, picks this were is dead. unfortunate. I Our was trying now. to give you flowers, so that, like Buddy, that's what everyone you... says. What? I asked for the Kevin gonna, Wild gonna, special gonna... at the floors. <laughs> Big show. What more can you say, bro? All right. I don't want to hear anything from you. What? Because you picked the Cowboys. You picked the Vikings. No, so I don't want to hear anything. It's between me and Baker. Oh, oh okay. Baker. I don't know if you watch the show or not. He does. But I've been on a roll. <laughs> I've been right about almost everything except you and those pathetic Eagles you beat last (laughs) night. So, Baker, I got one thing to say to you. Oh, there you go. Bravo. Bravo. Very well done, young man. You overcame all the naysayers, including myself. And it's been a tough two years for you. You've had to fight. You've been doubted. You've been down. And you have overcome. So I am impressed. And even though your season is going to end this weekend, that's all right, though. Getting them to the second round, that is an impressive season. You have had a great year or a very good year. And you obviously were great last night. So I congratulate you on this. And before I go, before you go, I (laughs) I would be remiss. And I think you would agree with me, Baker, if I didn't give at least a little bit of a shout out. Don't you to dare. Kyle Trask. <laughs> he, if, had he not pushed you right. in training camp, That's had right. he not brought out the best in you, it took every ounce of your being, all the talent in your body, <laughs> in your arm, for you to b- become the starting quarterback. You edged him out. It was close, but he brought out the best in you. So I just want to give Trask a little bit of love and thing. Baker well, a lot of love. And I got to be honest. You like feels that jersey. right. Yeah, may, feels maybe we'll right. get Baker on the I got, show. I will say I, this. I'm from Cleveland. Before. Oh, dude, I you don't wish Baker was no, still no, no. in Cleveland. Oh, yeah. That was, I, I wish I told I you, Cleveland it's the biggest mistake that, that franchise ever made. Um, all right, let's just be honest and fair here quickly. In the last two years, the better quarterbacking season for the Bucs was the one we just saw. We can show it. It's undeniable. Right. There is no – show it, please. There is no metric. It's the same I, talent. I'm not it, Except it, – I, I mean, the numbers – What, bro? The numbers are okay. undeniable. You guys are no, quarterback No, the numbers wins, are fairly guys. close. It's – what, Wilds? And, and, and Brady was 45 no. years old. Hold on. I, 45. Of course he's 45. We're not comparing Baker to anything other – we are simply asking. The 2022 Bucks or the 2023 Bucks. Which one had the better quarterback play that season? That's the only question that I'm asking. 
Tom Brady was better last year than Baker this year. As, as good as Baker was, and based, I don't know can I ask, down can down I ask based on yeah. what? They want us to do this he with the more this year. yards. We're going to pull up some crazy quarterback numbers. Yeah, that's great. Look, I'd love Baker, to do it. Let's do it. not oh, Baker was really good last night, but let's not oh, they beat a dead team walking. So I'm just now if he goes and beats Detroit or even plays them tough, I'll give you that. Nope. But okay. I, I mean, you, last I don't think night, you guys was, remember last year's Bucks. They were they were boring, not yeah, scoring. Yeah, right. Brady was leaving the team to go to Patriot events. We talked about that being a problem, and they got rolled in the playoffs. Well, Baker Dallas, as an under was, Baker as an underdog in the playoffs went there and rolled Philadelphia. And so I just it's just he he's going to get three years, one hundred and ten million bucks. Why? Oh, okay, I. <laughs> sometimes I don't think I'm the leader of the show when I see this. <laughs> Did Buffalo finally impress Nick Wright? <laughs> Next on First Things First. And the Fox Sports Radio. Oh, gosh. It's Fox Sports Channel Series XX. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.